Could show what a knot does as well. Because that's kind of a, a funny one. Doesn't it kind of has some special rules that are a bit um, unexpected. Uh, right. So does the usual thing. If you send it an off or, or a zero, then it turns it into a one. You send it a one or an on, then it turns it into a zero or an off. Um, but somewhere in between, and it subtracts this value when it's positive. It subtracts that value from one. So 0 0.2 becomes a 0 0.8. And if I make it so I can have negatives and make make sure we're seeing the right thing, uh, make that negative, then it subtracts it from minus one, which means you have minus one, and then you subtract 0 0.4 for it, from it, which actually adds 0 0.4, so it becomes minus 0 0.6, which is what you get over there. Uh, if it's anything below that, it just stays at zero. And if it's anything, yeah, if it's anything above one, it stays at zero. Um, so this is actually quite useful for if you're using. Let's uh, right. So uh, a good way to move stuff around is using a keyframe, you probably know that. When it's on it's in a different position. But you can also um not just send it one to the power, because that's the on is the one or a zero, which would mean it doesn't have any effect at all. You can send it values in between. So then if you if you animate that those values you are animating the position just using a single keyframe no timelines or anything like that um, so I like to use a signal generator it's kind of my favorite gadget which um, is just a sine wave with a whole load of other stuff you can do with it which is really cool but for this purpose if I play it it just sends between a 0 and a 1 wobbling back and forth, you can make it like slower or faster. Um, so you just plug that into there and now it's bobbing up and down or the platform is moving back and forth or whatever you want. And you can give it a pause time so like a platform slowly gets to the position, stops for you to walk onto it, then moves to the next position, stops for you to get off. Um, so that's really cool. Um, uh, what if for some reason you wanted to move another one in like an opposite direction, something like that? Um, so if you did that, uh, no wait, what do we need to do? That's right. Let me try that again. So if we clone both of those, now that one affects the original and that copy affects the copy. Oh, that's in the wrong position. Okay, so it's still going. Let's do both of them at the same. Oh, what? That's interesting. Um, yeah, so they. <laughs> Let's just reset that. Okay. Move it up a bit. Done. Okay. So they both like move up and down in the same rate. I'll just turn that off for the, de the demo. But what if you wanted this one to be up while that one is down and vice versa? So they kind of make it maybe a couple of pistons in an engine, something like that. You can put it into the into the uh, knot because if you remember. Uh, just plug that into there um, and plug that into there and make it slower so we can see it. 
Okay, so that's going up to one, that's going down to zero. Now it's going up to one, that's going down to zero. They're like in opposite um, strides or something where they kind of, uh, the value is inverted in some way but just between zero and one. So then if you plug that into there instead, now they're moving in sync but in opposite directions and I'll plug it from there instead and all just from a keyframe for each and it just works.